Hey guys, how's it going? So today's project is super fun and super big. So we're planting the 14 brand new containers we just got from Unique Stone along this fence line. Check this out. I'm so looking forward to it. Now we did a little prep work before we started filming today. Um, just got all the soil out. I put the plants that are gonna go into each one of these pots by them. But I wanna talk a little bit about what we had done. Let me, I think this one might be a little bit shadier right here. So first off, we had a hose bib, like one of these right here, about halfway down the line there. And that's where we had our hose coiled up and it always kind of threw off the uniformity of this area and we needed um, a water line brought out here anyway so we have more zones so we can plant this up this year we're also going to be able to take some water out on the new property and water trees that we're going to plant along the new lane so we needed to get the water work done anyway it was kind of perfect so they scooted all the gravel about this far out into the driveway they trenched here put in a brand new water line and then put in a new faucet both here and at the other end, so we still have water access, like we can, still has a tag, uh, we can hook up a hose if we need to, and, you know, water anything nearby, but they also put in a dedicated drip zone, or drip line pipe, whatever, and trench that as well, because we had, last year we put in drip, even though we were using self-watering containers, we put drip in here so that we didn't even have to come out here and hold a hose. We wanted just to be able to turn on the zone, um, but we just buried that black half-inch poly underneath the gravel barely. So it was starting to show and it always looks a little bit bad. Um, so this actually belongs to a pipe that's down there. So um, they also, while they had it all scraped back, they created brick pads for all these pots so that everything is level with each other and everything comes up to the exact same spot on the fence. So it'll look extremely precise. And we just figured, you know, since we're having this water line done, we may as well kind of do that. They were out here working on the brick pathway on the west side. So um, they brought some of their supplies over here and did that. So there's actually a layer of road mix that they compacted. They did this just like a brick walkway. And then there's a layer of this like sandy stuff right here. And then they laid the bricks and then um, they did this like concrete kind of shoulder around the whole thing to kind of hold it together. Um, and we are bringing in more gravel later to kind of um, even this whole thing out but that won't happen for a little while. And then the bonding sand in between the bricks. So today I am going to be using our ang angle grinder and I'm going to grind out a little channel right here so our drip tube can kind of just tuck right into the bricks and go right up through the center drain hole of the pot. Now these pots, they're called, this is the extra large uh, jumbo jardinier from Unique Stone, 25 inches tall, 31 inch diameter, so a really like statement size container. These are concrete. They will stay out all year round. We won't cover them or do anything special. We don't typically have a hard time with concrete staying out in our area. Um, so we'll do the whole drip thing. We'll lift the container back onto the brick pad. We'll fill it with soil and then my plants. Check this out. So the centerpiece is a skyrocket penicetum. You might remember, I used one of these in one of our containers along this same fence line last year, and I used it at the end of the season. I tied it together in a bundle, and it made, like, created these beautiful seed heads, and I put it in the middle of an arrangement that has hydrangeas around it. I still have it inside our house. It's gorgeous, and it performs so well out here that I'm gonna use this as a centerpiece in all the pots, and this one gets 24 to 30 inches tall. Surrounding that is going to be, this is called a Moonlight Light Salmon, uh, zonal geranium. I've tried to get my hands on the Americana or Daredevil uh, salmon geraniums from Proven Winners and I've tried for like two or three years and I still can't get my hands on them and I see comments from you guys often when I'm using plants saying that you can't find a certain variety that I'm using and I just wanted to let you know it happens to me too and we even work with Proven Winners quite a bit but these are very pretty. These will surround the grass so this will be my next layer and then we're going to do three Super Tunia Bordeaux isn't that gorgeous? So check that out. This is going like this makes me so happy to have all these colors, like have my colors back over here and have the uniformity over here. And then we're going to do an Ipomia. This is called Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime. So a nice trailing potato vine right there. And I chose this one because it has a very clean look. It's not lobed or anything. And I really wanted that just as kind of a really weighty beautiful plant. Then we've got Snow Princess Lobularia, 
which this one will plant today and it'll last all the way through frost, like probably till Thanksgiving. This is a Supertunia trailing rose veined. It was formerly called a mini rose veined. Um, so this will behave a lot like the Bordeaux, but it's got more of a pink tinge to it. And then, yeah, that was the last one. So lots of plants, it's gonna be gorgeous, I think. So what we need to do then first is angle grind the bricks. So let me show you what I've got. This is our angle grinder right here. Battery operated, 60 volt. I don't know a whole lot about angle grinders, but we use this for the urns on the west side because we did the exact same thing because we have brick pads under there, under those urns. Uh, I've got my safety glasses, which one of you guys sent out to me, so I'll be using those. So I think we're just gonna haul into this project. Check these out, these are even DeWalt. So like I coordinate, it's perfect. So I'm gonna kind of do this, I'm not gonna put my hair up. Probably take me one or two to get the hang of it. So this is perfect. Got it just at the right depth to where we can set our pot down and it won't crimp the tubing. And then the only place we'll be able to see it really is about this much of it because we'll bring in more gravel to cover right here. So I'm gonna make sure there's plenty of give right here for when that happens. Anyway, this would be completely unnecessary this step if you wanted to toss your pot up on pot feet um, so that it created a little bit of a gap between the bottom of the pot and your surface so that you had enough room to run your tubing up underneath. But we like to do things the hard way around here. I don't know how easy that was to see, but we were able to just lift the pot on here and then we tipped the pot, Aaron did tip the pot while I fed it up through the center and there's plenty of give. Like I can, you know, like pull it out from back behind if I need to have a little bit more um, slack. So that is perfect. What we've traditionally done in the past, so this is just quarter inch black poly tubing with no emitter holes in it. Um, we bring it up through the bottom of the container and then I use like a cross uh, coupler um, which allows me to go off in three different directions with this same kind of tubing and then I put emitters on the end. And that's worked really well, but this year we're trying out something different. So this is what, this is a 100, 100 foot roll of six inch dripper spacing quarter inch drip line. This is a brand Dig Corp. Um, and so we're gonna try this and do a circle, like and maybe do a couple circles around the top of the pot because I think it might be a little bit better for spacing or for um, saturation. And all we need is one straight coupler. So this is the quarter inch coupler here. We have to put it in to the end of the quarter inch black and then right into the end of the quarter inch brown, just like that. And so I'm gonna wait to do anything else until I have this full of soil, but we'll end up doing some kind of configuration of this brown on the top. And then we'll use landscape staples, which I left in the gator um, to kind of tack it down. So anyway, let's get this thing filled with soil and then we'll show you the next step. And I'm using the organic potting mix right there. This is what we use in all of our containers. I think this is gonna be enough. I am not sure. So here we go. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It's like it was made for six cubic feet of soil. And I think I should actually go grab my slow release fertilizer and mix that in at this point before we work on the drip. All right, so I'm just gonna mix this into the top layer here. And you know, I did wanna mention, we've been using those Crescent, the True Drop watering, self-watering containers out here for the past three years. And I don't have really any complaints about them. We started to experience a little bit of plugging on just two of them last year. So there's no telling what would happen this year. But you know, for the three years we used them, they worked really well, our plants did well. I'm just not a huge, not the huge fan of the design, as huge a fan of the design as I am of real concrete. But I mean, it is nice that they're able, you're easily able to move them around because um, they're a lot lighter weight. But we're gonna be planting those this year. They're just going somewhere else. That is, Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so now we get to plant. This is the best part. Centerpiece first. 
And I actually like too that these, when they built the brick pads, and I wasn't even expecting this, I thought they were just gonna be butting right up to the fence again like they normally have, and they built them out a little way, which I'm so glad they did because now it's gonna give my plants the opportunity to hang over all sides of the pot instead of just kind of the, the sides in the front, and then they would kind of like poof out behind here, and I'm sure it was a pain when they were trying to like get their lawnmower up close to the fence because they, they really didn't ever do any damage to our flowers. So I know that they were being careful. So now they won't have as big of an issue with that and it'll give the plants a chance to shine. Don't really have to do much root teasing. That's not root bound. So there we go. Then our geraniums. So this is going to be the first year that I actually have a little bit of maintenance to do on these containers because I will want to keep the geraniums deadheaded and I haven't had to do that out here before, but I think it will be worth it for what they will bring to this area. So I always tend to kind of split containers up into thirds. Um, and I do, well, you can tell like how I'm planting the geraniums. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here when I plant my um, supertunias, like I do three Bordeaux and then three of something different. And usually with those something different plants, they're all three of them are different varieties. I use the word different like a million times in that sentence. I'm really bad at explaining stuff sometimes, but you'll get it when you see it all the way done. There are buds all over on these plants. Look at this. And we're trying to win Aaron over to the side of geraniums this year because he's never been a huge, huge fan and I just absolutely love them. And so I've kind of avoided them over the past just because like, I don't know, you want to do stuff that you both like to look at. But this year, this year I'm going for it. I forgot to do the drip. I should probably do that before I get more plants in here. Shoot. Okay. I'm just gonna cut off a length just because I'm not sure how much I need this first time around. We'll get more efficient at it as we go. So I've got a length of drip that I'm going to weave around the front sides of the geraniums here. And then we're gonna come back in that might have been like the perfect amount. You gotta be kidding me. Look at that. Could I have guessed that better? No. Okay. So we're gonna put what they call goof plugs. I never knew to use or to look for them under that name, but they're little caps for the end of quarter inch tubing. They look like this right there. And I'm just gonna push one right into the end That'll keep any extra water from coming out. Let me grab some landscape staples to finish it up. So I've just got landscape staples. This is what we use for landscape fabric if we ever do landscape fabric. And I'm just gonna tack these, like tack the tubing down exactly where I want it to be. So each one of these holes will emit 0.65 gallons per hour per dripper at 25 PSI, which is what we have. Um, so we will just have to judge like we'll have to watch the container and judge how long we need to run these for i'm guessing it won't have to run very long because there are so many holes in this the length of drip line that i just used um, and it's something that you could always clip some out if you need to if you feel like geez this container is getting like way too much water or you can run it for far less time so you could do one of those two things to kind of address the issue um, so now we can plant the rest of these things i always like to do this one first this is going to be at the front of every container because i want it to spill down the same way is that the front erin does that look front and centered there and then we will do our bordeaux place our other two thinking the white one here maybe Ooh. These need water. Oh, that is just the most gorgeous thing. This is the Lobularia. Now, they don't look like much now. Sometimes you can find them with a little bit more bloom, but this one's got buds all over it. I am such a huge fan of the Snow Princess or White Knight or Dark Knight. Um, they are, and Blushing Princess. They're amazing plants. So what I expect this one will do is kind of like grow and intermingle. We may see some of it come out over here. It'll intermingle with this and it just brings a sparkle and they get enormous just one of them. Like I'm probably over planting this container. This is what I like to do. And I decided this year just to go for it. I love the flowers on this. They're so like, they're a little bit smaller and they're just so sweet. Okay. That one is done. So now we're going to do this exact same thing 13 more times.
so good. I already like them about a million times better than what we had out here last year because there's no colors fighting with each other. They're all the same. It's very pleasing to the eye and it's very striking to do things all in a very uniform manner. And I think it works really well in this application in particular. I'm gonna to move to this one because this is a little bit more in the shade just to kind of go over the plants. I think adding these geraniums in, I mean, it gave us instant impact. Usually I don't have this with all this color. Usually it's just the grass um, and then the little plants around it, which will fill in dramatically. Um, and now you can scale this up or down depending on what your you know container situation is. If you were to use this in a smaller container, I mean, you could eliminate the grass, honestly, like as I'm looking at these, it would be beautiful just to have, you know, a geranium centerpiece and not have the grass. Although I do think that this is gonna add some really nice drama later on once it grows up taller, but you could put just a geranium with, you know, one of each of these things in a container, or you could even pare down and just do like a geranium with the potato vine and one Super Tunia Bordeaux, and that would be an absolutely gorgeous blend. I just think these colors are so cool, cooling, and especially when it gets so hot out here, and it's, this is typically a full sun spot, using cool colors, just, it visually makes you, makes the area look cooler, if that makes sense. You can see the drip tubing in here. We um, watered them all in from overhead with a hose just to settle the soil all around the root balls, make sure everything was tucked in nicely. And then we did run the drips just to make sure that they work and all of them are working really great. I figured out there are 16 drip holes in each one of my little um, pieces that I put in here. So I made sure each pot has the same amount of drip holes. So each pot will receive exactly the same amount of water. And I think I figured it out. It was like if I ran them for 15 minutes, um, the each pot would get 2.6 gallons of water. So we'll be able to kind of judge based on that math, if my math is correct, um, you know, whether or not we need to run them for less time or more time. So I will be diligently checking the soil. Of course, right now it's not as hot out, so we won't have to water them quite as much as when it, you know, gets really, you know, 100 degrees plus. Um, in terms of other maintenance, we'll be fertilizing once a week. We fertilize every Friday with a water soluble fertilizer. And then I'll come out and pop off spent ger uh, geranium bloom heads and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's really not a whole lot more unless I need to come and trim up the potato vine, which I may have to do. Potato vines are pretty fast growing plants and I anticipate, especially with the fertilizer and the amount of sun they're gonna get, it's gonna grow really fast and it's gonna be gorgeous. So did we leave some drip supplies out? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I'm super excited to show you the progress of these as the season progresses. Um, and I'm really, really happy with this. And like I said at the beginning of this project, we will be doing our container competition probably maybe even this week we'll get around to that project and then we will uh, show you where all the pots are gonna go and I think it'll be a fun project too. So I didn't really want to miss out on that because it was a way to get Aaron involved and that was fun. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.